was no longer in Corey's sphere, Corey kept dumping everything else on me. Uh, Leon, they want me for this conference. Can you can you take a look yes, at that? Yes, that's paperwork. Uh, Leon, somebody wants to write a, a, a book about me. Uh, I don't have time to write it, but can you take a look at this? Uh, Leon, happens, Mr. Fish. here's a, a movie idea, but do we need an MDA? It was more and more and more being dumped on Leon. And finally, I had to write him a letter, basically as a little pushback, a polite pushback, stating, I can't do all this. And well, that's I can't interesting. Take all these you should email me where you heard emails. that from. Because I heard about something similar. And I'd like to have two sources saying that. Like I said, and, and by the way, uh, we may be checking in with the IRS to find out if there's any open investigations into this situation. But isn't it interesting that this man, Corey Good, created all of this karma and everything that's coming his way in the future as a result of this is all his fault. Uh, you know... I mean, the IRS is always going to find out eventually, but the, the, all of this... See, the problem for Corey Good is that all of this information is now public record. So it's public record now that David Wilcock raised $100,000 for him in fundraising several years ago. It's public record now that a, 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 a donator, who we redacted here, gave Corey Good $35,000 for his children's schooling. You have to pay taxes on all of that money. You you can't not pay taxes. It's income. You're not a charity. You're not, you know. So there's going to be an awful lot of problems for Mr. Good going forward, uh, at least from an income tax perspective, I would think. Speculative. And it really meant nothing to me. The big picture to me was what you were getting ready to allude to, the 20 and back television show, and the 20 and back movie. Now, that could be big. So basically, I was betting on myself. Yeah, and it's interesting. There was going to be these big Hollywood television and movie deals arranged by Leon Isaac Kennedy, but Corey Good ruined that now, too, because he sued Leon Isaac Kennedy. And those were his connections to get those deals. So, Corey Good screwed the pooch on this one terribly. With my Hollywood connections, to be able to take this story it happens and sell exposure. it. And thanks for being a member. Uh, is that making sense? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. So, as a result, what I did was the following. I got with Tracy Edmonds, who has Tracy Edmonds Entertainment. And you can look Tracy up, but she's a formidable force in the industry and very highly respected. She's done movies, <laughs> uh, documentaries, all types of things for, for many, many years. Recently just did a film that went number one with Netflix that starred Queen Latifah. She's in production right now doing something over at BET. But she's been working consistently for over 25 years, had a big movie called Soul Food years ago, used to be married to the baby face who was a big, big person in the music industry. So at any rate, I had a relationship with Tracy. We then went over to STX. I made a deal to David Wilcock over at STX. They did a pilot on him because going back now for a moment, I wanted David to be to be beyond the conspiracy community. I wanted him to be more mainstream. So I got a pilot deal for him over there and also got a big deal for David at STX where STX was going to put up over a million dollars for us to have our own Ethvod channel. And um, they were bringing in, they had, the person that was in charge of that division had had success with Ethvod. So he said, Leon, this is a great idea. This is a cash cow. Uh, yeah, let's do this. And they so uh, essentially here we see details that Leon Isaac Kennedy had not only the capability and the connections, but the the absolute ability to close deals. And I just have to tell you, spending a lot of time in the entertainment industry myself, that there's a lot of BSers, you know? If you're going to be an entertainer, I, myself, I met a lot of agents and 
producers, directors. I met so many people that were full of it. They all told me they could do X, Y, or Z for me. None of them ever came through. When you got a guy like this that can get you million dollar deals, you don't sue him. You don't accuse him of criminal wrongdoing with no evidence. You thank him and be grateful and thankful for the day you met him because this man is the real deal and he had the real connections to do all these million dollar deals with Corey Good. And what does Corey Good do? Sue him. Great job. Great job, Corey Good. He even brought in some people to, to help run it if we did that, uh, that deal. So that's what I did for David over at, S, S, uh, at STX. Now, with the S5 channel, of course, Corey would have been a part of that. Okay, now back to Corey. So we also then shopped the 28 back television and movies. We shopped it to STX. Their movie slate was already full, so, so they passed. But we then took it to various people. We took it to J.J. Abrams. We took Corey to WME, which used to be William Morris, uh, for representation because nowadays you... Did you hear that? Leon Isaac Kennedy has a connection and can get a meeting with J.J. Abrams. Is Corey Good just the stupidest person on planet Earth? If you have a manager getting you all these million dollar deals, hundreds, hundreds, making you hundreds of thousands of dollars, why would you sue that person? Corey Good might possibly be the stupidest space grifter I have ever come across. It's like killing the golden goose, right? You don't kill the golden goose, dummy. What a dummy. You usually have to have a powerful agency to open up certain doors. So we took Corey over there and then we went to Netflix. And when we went to Netflix, Virginia's. yes, we did not meet with lieutenants. We met with the top person in charge of the movie division and the television division. And I just want to say again, if you have a manager that can get you meetings with the top tier people at Netflix, you thank God for the day you met that manager. You sign him to a contract and you pay that man a great percentage of everything that he signs a deal on involving you. I would have killed for a manager like this while I was uh, in the entertainment business. I would have killed for a manager that had those, these kind of connections. And Corey Good, what does he do? Accuse the guy of stealing from him and sue him like an idiot. Now, well, just quickly in Hollywood. Hollywood is based upon a power structure yep. and relationships. If you really break down Hollywood and get into the A-list, there's only about 200 people in that A-list circle. Yeah, you know, he had a higher over risk. Over and over and over. It's he had the a, same he stars, had a $75,000 the same director, director, it's the same producers, it's the same writers, and it's very hard for other people to break into it. Yeah, he doesn't want to show you up through what I call the gatekeepers. And so you have to have relationships. So we did have the relationship to have um, those meetings. So here's the problem. Corey... And once upon a time, I loved Corey. I truly did. There's a side of Corey that is very lovable. There's another side of him, but I won't get into it right now. But Corey, with this whole Roger feud. Nope. Bankruptcy does not stop the It's destroyed so many things. So in Corey's mind, the contract with Roger was going to run out in October. So therefore, he was not going to do any deal until October. And there we go. So, and by the way, all these big deals that Leon Isaac Kennedy was arranging, Corey Good screwed up because, as he just detailed, Corey Good wanted to cut Roger Ramsour out of the deals and make more money for himself. So again, we see this tremendous level of greed. How greedy could you be that you'll screw up a movie deal because 
you want to get rid of the manager guy that you have, who, by the way, helped put him there too. Roger Ramsor did. But my point here is that we were so close with the Netflix deal that could have gotten a major movie done. And where would we all be now? We wouldn't be fighting over these little petty things. And that's what I kept trying to say to Corey. All of this, I used to say, look at the two C's. One C is creative and one C is combat. And Corey, you, you are so into combat of sitting up, monitoring Facebook and Twitter and this, and everybody says monitoring. something about you and so on and so forth, rather than just be creative. And all this infighting and these little things, I don't give a damn about these little things. Yeah, and isn't it interesting that that's a good manager. Leon Isaac Kennedy is right. If you're going to be, uh, you know, a public figure, you're always going to have people, you know, trashing you on the internet. And we've heard details from people like Teresa Yaneros that Corey Good would spend all day and night uh, on a laptop looking at everything that everybody ever said about him, right? And we also saw details. For years, Corey Good said that he had a cybersecurity firm that was investigating all of these criminals on the internet that were part of a vast criminal conspiracy against him to prevent him from making money in the UFO community and all this nonsense. And he's got all this evidence. He paid that cybersecurity firm huge amounts of money and all they found were mean tweets. Mean tweets is not evidence, Corey Good. Jeez, I can't believe he did this to this man. I just cannot believe it. I'm interested in the big target, and the big target is the 